who is watching you going on to glory? Who is watching you? Angels? Our created spiritual beings who are <coughs> servants of God. All right. And they possess intelligent emotions. They have a great power, but are not omnipotent. Ah. Amen. Tell it. The angels do <coughs> not have unlimited power. All right. They have extensive wisdom, but are not omnipotent. Now we only know one person is right. omnipotent is God. He is Almighty God. We yeah. serve our mighty God. Right. A mighty God. Yeah. But all, not all knowing, all wisdom, or all seeing. We only serve an omniscient God. He's all knowing and all seeing. Yes, he knows the past, the present, and the future. Yeah, that's right. Right. In the first three verses, it's talking about the seen, the unseen, and those that have you cannot see. Like for example, the present. I see everybody sitting. If somebody was pregnant, that would be the unseen. Well, somebody has gone on. There's only one scene. That is today. The present moment is of now. That we are listening to this word. Thanks, thanks, Amen. Thanks, and God is in control. Yes. We serve a mighty God. Hebrews 2 and 11, thus, made it him a little lower than the angel. What is man that thou mindful of him? That was the theme where we went to. And when we went there, we praised every day. Every day. I mean, I felt so strong. It almost like I was lifting weights. Then my body felt so good. So much energy and so much joy. These people would praise from sun up to sundown. Yes. So I'm encouraging y'all, next year you want to listen to Lois and Gilly. <laughs> Who is man that thou mindful him that thou honors him, crowned him with glory, and did set him up over the works of thy hands? You know, when I was being trained as a deacon, and uh, I think it was a young man by the name of Bobby Hill, who said, We are uh, the hands between the pastor and the people. We do the work between, this is the past, we do work between the pastor and the people. So that was one of the questions that we had. So if we're doing work between the pastor and the people, and we have been y'all. So who are you the hand that speaks to? All right. Okay. So therefore, you the hand and the feet. Great example. The honorees today. Who are you telling somebody about Jesus? Who are you visiting somebody? Come on. Hand them a piece of cake or a five dollar bill when they're sick. Who are you being a help to? Come on now. This is called evangelism. Does the writer reminds us that Christ is greater than any angel? We have three generations. The saints are present. Uh -oh. Who is watching you? We have the Father, not seeing the Son, which do appear. The Holy Ghost, who lives inside of us, to lead and guide us on this task. Amen. Amen. You know, the Lord places His Spirit in such a weak vessel. Yeah. Yes. In such a weak vessel. Yeah. Even compared to clay or pottery. Oh, okay. And if you ever spun anything on a wheel, this one I used to go to school with. We used to do, we used to make those clay things and we used to spin them. And to try to do it, it goes all crazy. Then it goes all crazy again. You try to line it back up, try to make it look like a pot or a statue or something. And when you get almost to the end, it goes all back crazy again. So therefore, you being a work, you a work being formed on the wheel, whether you know it or not. Amen. That's what we're talking about. A wheat vessel and a pottery and a clay. But his vessel is in your body. It's a young man by the name of Mr. Dunst used to say, it's better, what, to be in the house of the Lord. It's better to be a what, house for the Lord. What is in your house? The Spirit of God, amen. Amen. Hey, amen. That's right. And I ain't trying to thank you over there. Amen. The writer reminds us that Christ is greater yes. than an angel. 
We have three generations. Of course, we're through that. Okay, but it's being excuse me. The Son, which do appear, and the Holy Ghost, okay, where I am at, who lives inside of us to lead and guide us. Matthew 17 and 3. Peter, James, all right, the right one you can do. And John, his brother. And God brings him into a high mountain apart and was transfigured before them. And he fed, and his face did shine as the sun. As, as you know. And his raiment was white as light. And behold, there appeared unto him Moses and Elijah talking with him. Now Elijah, somebody would say that he's speaking about John the Baptist, which I say somebody had to go on and run that break before him. He had to sound along that Jesus Christ was coming. You know, he was a wild man and everybody looks at him. You know what? Even though he was doing that form and work on the wheel, some of these people y'all think are crazy. Really, he's talking about God. Some of these people you think will never make it. Right? you never be no good. Yeah? You're just like your father. You're just like your mother. We always can say all these hurting things, but guess what? Those are the very ones that I believe become ministers and deacons. Amen? Right. Amen. Okay. Amen. But I can tell you that I used to be one of them. I would blow me. All of Peter, James, and John used metaphors to teach and to explain verses and messages of Scripture to help them understand the Word of God. Take, for example, Paul used to watch athletes in the Olympic arenas. All right. Now, today, right now, you know, Paul would be an avid fan of uh, the Redskins, or some would might say Deadskins. <laughs> Or somebody say, anybody be a cowboy? They call them the cowboy. Yeah. I mean, y'all can call me that out there. But I'm not even a football player. Like, but anyway, I just want to get your attention. And use the runner, and use the runners to help explain scripture. Now, or we should say a figure of speech sometimes. If Paul was alive today, he probably would uh, use track and field. See, because when I used to go to school, I used to be running the 100 yard dash, 440, All right. an 880, and the relay breaks my face. <laughs> See, because the last man was the anchor man. All right. The first man was the rat. And the other two in between, they were the guys you hoped that they, they got that. They, they, they kept you up so the other four teams that you run against can give you a lead. So when the rabbit man would go off, he would start off. He would go off and get you a lead. We were a race. We start off getting the race. And I did it perfect the next thing. But after the turn, he goes to the turn, he comes to the turn out, he goes in the handoff. Perfect. Do not drop the baton, you just walk by the whole team. And we're on a task. All right. So, all right. The next one we go, we have about a two yard lead. And they side to side. You go by third, the second runner going line, you come back. You get us another lead. Now we neck and neck. Perfect handoff. Now this young man right here, which I'm gonna call him uh, Charles L. Stone. The boy couldn't run. This guy was still in school. He used to always try to mimic himself out to me. Because everybody said, how can this guy run so fast? You know, he used to run. So anyway, he was running and teach him how to run and teach him how to run curves and he's stroking hard as he can stroke. I'm trying to teach him how to run the balls of the heels and when you get in the curve, just try it. The whole time sucking in there so you can keep oxygen to your muscles and your body. Somebody said, you're running, well, you know, but okay, good God Almighty. Once I told him that. So he comes into the turn, he's running, he takes off. He's going, he got a good, pretty good lead, he got with him. Next thing you know, he's coming in. He's coming in. He's coming in slow. Coming in slow. He's coming in slow. He started moving ground. He was doing well until he heard a good step coming to the side. How many people know you can't hear nothing but the footsteps? And you're running hard as you can, you can't hear nothing. You hear everybody screaming. And again, you when you're playing football, you can hear everybody. Who's in the stands watching you? Amen. He's running this race, and all of a sudden, I made a long story short. I'm handing it off to the anchor. 
somebody a word from God. If you got to those in, come talk to us. You got to ask a word to give them. That's right. You just can't go on well. This is what I would do. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. That was the policy. He said, what would Jesus do? We're going to be emulating Jesus. We're going to be assimilating Jesus here. We're going to be imitating Jesus. So run the race that you may obtain. Uh -huh. And every man that striving for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now these do it to obtain a corruptible crown. I mean, you might have, you might be the president of the United States, you might be a rocket scientist, you might be a doctor, all these titles. But I tell you, one title is greater than all of them. Those is being a servant of God. Amen. Whether you are in a position or not, but you are out in the hedges and highways and proclaiming the gospel to God. Telling others yes, yes. that there was a better way. Please, don't please come with me to church. All right. Don't plead with them. Tell them. And if you know you're a good disciple, the word of God will come back. And they'll remember right. what you say. Because you say the words in this book. Come on. Not your words. That's right. It will not fall on their fears. Yes. Yes. All right. Bring it out. But we an incorruptible. To obtain, to obtain an incorruptible crown, we first. It is to be ran by laying aside every weight. Every way. Sidetrack you did. So easy to be set up. So what would that way be? Second is to be ran by putting all in tight and sin. This sin seems to be referred to the one sin above all others' death. Defeat a Christian. Let me help you with that. You know what? I was telling you about the house. But you know, somebody will come knock on your door. All right. Hello, how you doing? It's not the married man. There's somebody coming to your house. Some stuff we got hidden. Some stuff we got hidden in the closet. <laughs> you guys, if you live in a two like uh, do a duplex house like that, I got about three cars. So I'm using me, I can use nobody else, okay? So say when you got three cars. This man comes up to us say, hey, how you doing? My name is Jesus. How you doing? How you doing? And I want to come in and I want to inspect your house. 
I want to inspect your house. Do you mind if I come and start with the closets? <laughs> okay. So some of those closets, there might be some stuff like pornographic stuff. A spirit that's in your house to let some woman to lust after her, but you just can't control it. Or do you just have a mouth that you're always coming out and cussing somebody out because if I was with you, you won't cause me to use my religion. Well, and then, what you mean? You never had it if you won't call somebody out cause you to lose it. Amen. Amen. I, uh, can I get an amen? Yeah. Yeah. Now somebody will get you so far off track that you just going to drop yourself and act like the devil, lose your integrity. If you say you are a child of the king, <laughs> what is it that so easily besets you? Somebody say you got you, you got to clean your own closet up with the word of God. Amen. Amen. But I'm here to tell you that he can do it. We serve a mighty God. Yes, sir. Third, it is to be ran with patience. Yes. You know, because sometimes we want to go to get ahead of God. Yeah. We want to go ahead and do what we want to do. Yes. Amen. But sometimes he's telling you to slow down oh, yeah. and listen to this soft voice of God. Yeah. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, All right. so fight as one that beateth the air. We must consider those who have ran the race. So we must fight with certainty, yes. with purpose, that we will not be moved. Right. Our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel, that we will not be moved. Amen? Yes. That's one thing that we can stand on. Yes. Solid ground. All Solid other grounds ground. are seeking sand. Yes. You yes. might have heard that a good bit, yes. but that's a fact. Yes. You want to stand on something solid. solid. And that's the word of God. Hebrews 12, 1 and 3. Wherefore, seeing we also have great compass about with so great a cloud of witness, let us lay aside every weight Everybody. and sin which do so easily beset us. Mm -hmm. Now, I was talking about my sister when she got hit on the side with a roundhouse sucker punch. So she's really blaming God. So therefore, I'm just going to keep her just different prayer. I'm going to keep moving. Uh, run with patience the race that is set before us. Jesus had already led us to the finish line in verses 11 and 2 and 11. For both he that sacrificed, sacrificed and they who are sanctified are all of one. For which cause he is not ashamed to call them brothers. Jesus is the author and finisher of our faith. Amen. 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 In that he has already blazed the tree and finished the course. All right. Amen. Though chapter 11 provides many champions to emulate the supreme example in doing in Jesus himself. For example, Hebrews 2 and 11. Look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Now let us consider those who have gone on before us. Now, by faith, Noah, being warned of God, of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, the beginning of wisdom, Come on now. Prepared and up to the saving of his house wow. by that which he condemned, con commanded the world, and became heirs of righteousness, which is by faith. Now, God is going to tell you to go out and do something that you have never seen or never done. Don't have no money, but he's telling you to go. He told Abraham the same way. Get out and go. Abraham got up in faith and went. Amen. 
He's going to go out and he's going to tell you to do this or do that. You might have no money at all, but he's going to provide. When you get there, everything's going to be provided. Because in faith, you believe in God that he's going to provide before you get there. Because that's the unseen thing that you're always contending with. That's some of the excess baggage in your mouth, which is in your mind, that you don't want to say, well, God, I don't know you ain't telling me to go. I'll do that here. I'm telling you to go. He told Jonah to go. You see what happened to Jonah? Yeah. 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 Amen. By faith, Noah, being warned of God. Now, Hebrews 11, 11. Through faith, also, thank you, Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of child when she was past age because she judged him faithful. Who had promised? What? Who had promised? Now, God promised you that he was going to give you baby. We talked about Hannah this morning. Yeah. Reverend Rose, she brought up a good point. Talked about Job. He talked about the naked that come in the naked that go ahead. No matter what. He's going in eternal. This is my life. This is what I'm going to do until you come back, my Savior. And he got double. Hannah got, had kids and she had five more, even though she once said one to school. Samuel. Yeah. Amen. Sarah had kids. She had that child. She had Isaac. In fact, you know what? You know, if Sarah had to run that race. She ran it with patience and she held on. But it still got ahead of God. It had Hagar to have a baby. They got ahead of God. They got ahead of God. They had, had, had uh, Ishmael. Amen. That's right. But you know what? Before they even had that, you know what? My uh, Abraham had to go to the mountain. And talk to God about this. About the blessing that with, with it, uh, Hagar wanted to give Ishmael. But you want to know something? God said, hold up. Sarah, I know you laughed. But you know what? After this long reign, you've been faithful. And you promised. I promised you that you have a baby. My dad Abraham said, I got to go to the mountain and pray about this. You know why? He had to go and talk to God. You sure we'll have a baby? You know what? He comes back and he comes in the house and he talks to him. Sarah. And Sarah said, what did God say? He told me you're going to have to back that thing. <laughs> what? 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 Hello? Hey, man. Being in the brightness of the sun of this burning. That's S U, that's not S U N, that's S O C N. That's O N, okay. Sun. Got it. Okay, I'm almost done. He was eleven. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. And he that had received the promise referred offered up his only begotten son. Now Isaac for surely was good as dead. But Abraham, knowing the problem, knowing that God, who is faithful, that could resurrect his son. He was another resurrection of Jesus, but God didn't doubt it to happen. But when he turned around, he had a ram in the bush. Amen. Right. Testimony. I have four. Now we're at the end of this one. And those that went on. And we are in the arena of God. Who's watching you? Okay. We have run this race. Yeah. We have steadied the course. Yes. And for me, there's a crown laid up right. for me. All right. Amen. Yeah. Who's in the ring? Your mother, your father. <coughs> then we are in the arena of God. All these empty seats are filled. You can't see them, but they're there. Amen. 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 I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. Yeah. Right. I hope. My I hope kept the faith. I have kept the faith. Excuse me. Second Timothy four and eight. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, yeah. which the Lord, the righteous Judge, shall give me in that day. And not only me, but unto them 
also that love him. Amen. And appear. His appearing. Now, how many people are waiting to see Jesus Christ? They love his appearing. Every one Sunday we come here, we praise him. We don't even know about the we have we know that we're running the race, but one day that race is gonna be over. All right. And we all will be standing and giving praise to God. And we're going to be able to behold the face of Jesus. Yes. Amen. Right. The saints ran with perseverance. The race marked, marked out for us. Fixing our eyes on Jesus. The pioneer and perfect okay. faith of Jesus Christ. Running this race. I want to say thank you. Thank you. you know, because running this race is not an easy race. This race is for those who can do it to the end. Amen. 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 Amen.